The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. It's Q101. It is 6.04. It's 32 out. A little colder than yesterday. Just be aware of that before you walk outside. Uh, coming up today at 8, we have the Q101 Twisted Christmas tickets for the Black Keys. That is night one. That is three weeks from today. Night Ooh. one of Twisted Christmas. Are you kidding me? So that's happening at 8. Plus, you'll get into the Black Keys record hang at the Empty Bottle, which will be uh, three weeks from yesterday at the Empty Bottle. Are their DJ set? Yeah, very funny. They're going to play shot, 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 shot. You're going to do well, that one. I don't even think people recognize the song based off your cadence. Shot, 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 shot. Remember how huge that song Everybody, was? Everybody, yeah. I mean. No, the, I vividly remember a lot of stuff. I mean. A lot not, of stuff happened to me during that song. Oh, what happened? <laughs> that, I just it was, it was a very fun time of my life. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, it was just that that song that would come on like when anything needed to be amped up to the next level, wherever you went. Forget about just hearing on the radio, but just like a, a sporting event or just anywhere you went when that song came on, it was like, okay, there's the party's going on here. Here's, 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 here's yeah. what's happening. There's it. I want a shot now. I want several shots. Like I want foam, very shot, foam shot, party shot, energy. Shot, shot. I need six shots. Shot, 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 shot. shot, shot, shot. Well, Whoa. keeps going. I, for the cadence of the first verse. Everybody. Shot, shot, <laughs> shot, 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 shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what Twisted Christmas is going to be like. I mean, LMFAO won't be there. But we'll play that. How one. interesting would that be <laughs> <laughs> in between? So night one is the Black Keys. Local H, our favorite local guys. Alex sucks. A very rocky night. Very rock bluesy, rock punk night. And then we bring in LMFAO to start it off. <laughs> they, they only sing. The opener. They only sing that song and then they leave. Uh, honestly, worth it. Oh, I don't know what else they have. I don't even care <laughs> how much they cost. You come in and just do the sh- do shots one time. What year was that song? Is I'm, I'm thinking like 2009. Wow. Is it that long ago? Um, shots. Uh. <laughs> we're good. Here's how we're starting. Uh, shots song year. 2009. Look at that. Yeah, look at you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's why I'm still doing a lot of shots. Oh. Uh, yeah. You, so You still are. What are you talking about? Well, here's the thing. So 2009, what would it cost to bring them in to play that song today 14 years later, do they need the money? I bet LMFAO costs at a... If I had to guess, I would say they cost 30000 to perform. That's reasonable. I bet they do. Yeah. Because it's only two guys, not a big setup. Yeah. So it's mainly profit. Yeah. Unlike unlike the bands with, a, you know, their eight guitarists and their drummers. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, These guys do not have an expensive setup. Sure. <laughs> I know a few DJ groups that perform that would charge like 10. Yeah. But these guys are a lot bigger. Right. Um, I bet it's like 30, not including travel. <laughs> I got to pay for their hotel room and their flight? Probably, yeah. Oh, that's terrible. That's disappointing. I bet it's more because I don't think they need the money. One of the guys from LMFAO is the son of the founder of Motown Records. He's either the son or is he the grandson? I think he's, I thought he was the grandson. He's the son. He's the uh, youngest son. Wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. They don't need the money. I, th- I think they're they're charging a, a hard price. Well, does he doesn't, but does the other guy need money? There's <laughs> no way. <laughs> do, do you think they split? One of them's killing it. One of them is like homeless now. I mean, if you have a rich friend, he doesn't give you his money. I mean, I mean they have like a posse, possibly like an entourage type of deal, but he's not giving you all that Motown money. Well, listen, it may be, okay, it may be like 20 or 30. Okay, so when I worked in Florida, there was a lot of like club appearance artists, right? Right. Um, so really more like in a hip hop zone, like DJ set zone and stuff. And a lot of times it would be like twenty thousand dollars to show up to a club, right? Not right. perform. It's different. They're called walkthroughs. Yep. Those are just you're like, oh, guess who's gonna be there? Yeah. And a lot of those artists were like twenty thousand to show up. So maybe they'd be like a thirty thousand dollar guest, and they're like, oh, but if you want us to perform, it's fifty or something like that. I remember back in the day. So Q101 has picnic in the summer, and back in the day we used to call it jamboree, and there was the DJ. Like st- the kids store. Uh, no, not Jamboree. <laughs> jamboree. <laughs> Q101's Jamboree. And 
uh, there was a DJ named Armin Van Helton, and he was peaking at that time in the early 2000s, and they we hired him to play in between the bands. So he would DJ between yeah. the bands playing. So let's say he performed, I don't know, seven times throughout the day, but he didn't play a whole set, and we paid him $67,000, I remember. And I was kind of mad. Holy crap. <laughs> he got 60 Art Van Buren, what was his name? Armin Van Helton, I believe his name is. And Ow. he was amazing, but he'd come out there, and I think you've seen this, Kenzie, when you go see a DJ set. He has a crew of people on his stand, and he just kind of push a button, and then he kind of go with his hands. I'm like, yeah. wait, he's not working. He's hitting a mix he made like a year ago. I could do that. Well, that's the thing is that some people, there is still the art of DJing where some people actually do real sets. And then there's people who come on and they literally just hit the button and play their songs I, and run around. I'm convinced more do and that. And then Marshmallow's the smartest of them all because he's not even allowed to talk. Yeah, <laughs> and he wears a mask. I'm like, that was the best idea. Oh, it's part of my persona. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I dropped the ball so hard. So I was right. It's Armin Van Helden who was up really peaking at that time and killing it. He probably still kills it as far as I know. He's from Boston. But $67,000 to DJ between the bands of Jamboree. And I'm like, hey. How about breaking off a little bit for me? I'm working over here. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, a little bit for me. I'm not going up there just pushing play on my iPod. You know? I don't think he gives a crap what you're doing. <laughs> it's like your business. I know. I don't. He just walked away with a briefcase full of cash from Jamboree. He was good. It was really Ooh. awesome. It was good. Well, nobody can read a Heineken sponsorship like you, Brian. You deserve a bunch of money for that. Damn straight. Damn straight. They had Brian, like, mopping the floors in between <laughs> sets. Hey, Brian, before you go stage announce and bring on Blink Lady 2, can you take this garbage out? <laughs> can you get up all the water bottles? <laughs> the Q101 Morning Crew on Q101. Here's the veil. Some Q101 shows coming up within the month. Cannot wait, especially after the Cubby Bear pop up we did earlier this year. Uh, so wild. So, coming up now, a fact that makes your brain go. Anybody got any secrets out there? Are you keeping a secret? Everybody's kind of got one or two, I think. And some people relish in getting a ton of them and holding on to them. And then they just kind of dish them out to people that they choose as they go along. What? You know, I mean, like, if you have a secret, it's collateral. It's it's something you can go, well, I know something about this person, and I can't tell you. But then if they tell you the secret, then it becomes, oh, my God, you're in my little circle. You're in my trust circle. My circle. So, like, you use secrets against people, so that's good to know. Yeah, I do. I'm going to keep yeah. that people, noted. Listen, people tell me everything because I am a vault, and I don't share the secrets. If Once you prove you're a vault, they'll tell you. People come in here all the time. And they say, oh, I'll tell you something when no one else is in here. What I'm in here. I'm in here all the time. Nobody tells you anything. It's after you leave. It's after I leave. Yes. So the four minutes left over is when people spill their guts out. I'm off. here for quite a long time after the show. And, and everybody you're comes. You're your family, I know. Yeah. There's daycare going on, but I don't want to go home and clean the dishes. So, yes, people. Yeah. I'm telling you, people my whole life have told me secrets because I guess I just, they know they can trust me. They know I'm not going to just go rat it out and tell somebody. They're like, well, this guy doesn't have friends. Who's he telling? That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. So if you're holding a secret, this is what it does to you. We're going to tell you that coming up in a fact in about six minutes, uh, what it does to your body if you're holding on the secrets. Does it make you tall? You're pretty tall. I'm pretty tall. I think I was tall before the secrets came in. No one told me when I was 14 years old any secrets, when I was a, a thick boy. When you were a thick boy? Yeah, before I, I got, I mean, stopped being a thick boy when I grew seven inches mm -hmm. in one summer. I never grew them 5'2", that's why I'm still, I'm still <laughs> look like a bowling ball. Still, <laughs> there's still a chance to shoot up. You think so? Yeah, Dennis Rodman grew like seven inches in college. He was like 6'2", then he went to 6'9". 28. <laughs> it's, not, it's not too late. I was, college is, is younger. <laughs> the Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. 101. All time for a fact that makes your brain go. And this is about secrets. Secrets. Everybody loves getting secrets, gossiping, DMing them to people that you know. It's like, oh, you don't know this? You know Mike is cheating on Stephanie? No, I didn't know that. But don't tell anybody. It's the hardest thing. Is it hard for you to well, keep a secret? Somebody should probably tell Stephanie. Yeah, but <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> is, uh, is it hard for you to keep a secret when you know something? Kenzie? No, I think I'm a really good secret keeper, but I'm also like, I'm going to tell Stephanie. <laughs> like, okay, Stephanie's not being cheated on. There was an example I, I just threw I'm, out there. I'm already angry. Like, no, like what a piece of crap. Mike sounds horrible. Would you go right away if, let's say, let's say you know Mike well, but not Stephanie, and, you know, find out uh, that Mike is cheating on Stephanie? Um, okay. 
So my friend was in a predicament like this once where he, it was a guy, mm -hmm. and he was friends with the husband, and the husband was cheating on the wife. Okay. But he was cool with the wife, but he was friends with the husband. Right. And it really bothered him after a long time because he was like, I don't know, he just felt like this guy was being very scummy. It wasn't like, I don't want it to be like this. Like, he was fine with the cheating, and it bothered him, right? Sure. And one night, there was a surprise birthday party or a birthday party, whatever, being thrown for this guy. But the girlfriend was doing it, not the wife. Oof. So. Oh, God. He was like, he had wanted to say something, but again, it's a weird relationship. So he made it look like an accident, and he texted the wife and said, hey, I'm going to be a little late to the party oh, for him. Da -da -da -da. And she's like, what are you talking about? And he goes, well, he has a big birthday party tonight. And she's like, he's out of town. And then she showed up and blew the thing up. So I think in a scenario. Oh, my God. And I thought somebody was being really, truly scummy. Now, there's not a good reason to cheat, but if, like, something seems like it's going on in the relationship, like, there's, like, it's clearly falling apart. She knows, he knows, they're in council, whatever. I'm not going to put my nose in that because she may be aware of it or something, right? Right, right. But if you know one person's completely naive to it and the other person, like, literally doesn't care that they're starting a second family, I'd probably make, <laughs> I would probably make it, like, an accident yeah. like that. Because that's what you hope and pray for, that if somebody's doing that to you, you're like, please let me be able to find out. Like, I don't want to live my life like this. No, because it puts you as the friend of the cheater in a really you're always thinking I, about I it. I would be on my friend's ass, by the way. Yeah. Like, if, if I had a friend who was cheating on somebody, and again, it wasn't like, well, they didn't want to be like, oh, y'all a mess. But like, if it was like, this person's good and you're doing it, I would, they would know how much I'm not okay with that. Yeah, it's not fair. No. It's not fair to, I, I, I'd so rather not know. That secret I wouldn't keep. But if you're like, oh, a surprise party, like, yeah, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's awesome. And I'm, no one's cheating. It's just a regular surprise yeah, party. Yeah, like a normal surprise party that your wife's invited to. <laughs> where, where Mike no, is I'm a vault, baby. That alternate <laughs> universe where Mike and Stephanie are living this glorious life. They're going to live till they end up dying together yeah, holding hands. I don't hands. know about Mike and Stephanie, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think you should tell Stephanie. <laughs> is there a couple out there named Mike and Stephanie, by the way? If you're listening, I apologize. I just used an example in my head. A text in. Uh, Mike. Stephanie's is, trying to read between the lines right now. Yeah, no, no. If Stephanie, Mike's fine. And Check his phone. Mike, Stephanie's <laughs> fine. Well, keeping secrets can actually make you feel more alive. But to your point, this is a scientific fact that they went through people that when they kept secrets that were positive, like you're talking about, oh, my God, a surprise party. You know about it. You can hold on to it. 76% it, of Chicagoans, they feel better. and makes them feel good. It actually causes serotonin to release and make you feel better knowing a positive secret. But if you know a negative secret, it's exactly opposite, just what you said. It just gnaws at you to not... Was this my responsibility to let this information out oh, and help this other person? The moral secret finding out is... Ugh. God. I, I was in a similar situation where I, you know, couldn't take it knowing, and I, I didn't think that smartly to do that at that time, but I, I definitely confronted the guy and I said, if you're not going to do something here, I am. And it, it forced him to do something about it. He got a divorce over that. Stop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, I said, I can't hang around you guys knowing this. And, and, and again, I was his friend way before her. She was just in a, well, the wife of a friend. So eventually become friends. Yeah. But I confronted him. I said, if you don't do something, I'm going to do something. Uh, because you can't keep living your life. He was cheating a lot, like not just yeah. one girl. It, it was wasn't, rampant. It wasn't making another family. It was making maybe a whole bunch of other a little lot, families. Lot of families. Yeah, kind of like repopulating the earth, like Noah did with the animals oh, on the ark. I don't think he did it with the animals. Are we sure on that? I don't think that's what he was doing. <laughs> That's like a really dark twist of Noah. I, I didn't mean to throw Noah under a bus. Can we confirm that fact, Case? I don't or? need to look it up. I know Noah didn't sleep with the animals. <laughs> Sounds going on. He didn't have two of each, like one for the weekdays, one for the weekends. Sounds like a pretty good arrangement. <laughs> That's disgusting. You need help. <laughs> That's not the fact today, by the way. Noah didn't sleep with the animals. Keeping good secrets makes you feel good. Keeping bad secrets will definitely hurt your body, so don't do it. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. What'd you drop over there, you Duncan? My coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I wish that happened on the air because during that song, Kenzie's dancing there with the violent fans going, and all of a sudden this cup just goes, and it's a big pause, and it's, and it's all ice all over the floor, like iced coffee's gone, and she just goes, Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I used to spill like stuff. It wasn't like a massive surprise. <laughs>
Oh, no. Oh, no. Coffee's gone. He's our Duncan there. All right. Uh, Gil Curtis coming in with your headlines right now or what he thinks are headlines. This is not headline news. CBS has announced the return date for several of its popular primetime series. Their core audience is excited they lived long enough to see them return. A new study says keeping secrets can be a good thing. The study was conducted by anyone who has ever been married or in a relationship. A woman crocheted for a world record 34 hours and 7 minutes. She could have gone longer, but her cats were starving. And here's a fun fact. Days Inn was named after its founder, Cecil B. Day. Know what the B stands for? Bed bug. This is not headline news. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101.